Hi, I'm Jackie Jen, and welcome to Carolina Crafting. In the upcoming shows, we'll be taking a road trip through the Appalachian Mountains, visiting artists and crafters in their studios. At each stop along the way, we'll meet with a variety of artists, crafters, and visit their studios to see them at work. Our first stop will be at Judy Pepper's in Warren, North Carolina. Judy lives and works on top of a mountain overlooking an alpaca farm. Judy's a glass bead artist. Her husband Ken is an artist in his own right. He makes natural waterfalls and ponds like the one that enhances the front of their home. Hi, today we're at Judy Pepper's house, a glass bead artist from Warren, North Carolina. Uh, Judy, what got you interested in glass beads? Well, as a wire wrapper before I made glass beads, and we had a lady come to the school, William Hall in School of Lapidary Arts, and uh, put on a demonstration. I was immediately addicted to the fluidity of molten glass. It's just phenomenal. Being an oil painter, the colors, I was very much attracted to the brilliant colors that you can get with glass beads. Where do you display your work? Where do you, where I have do you a, sell? <laughs> I have a gallery in, in, in Brasstown, North Carolina, a little gallery called Judy's Place. And I sell out of there. And then when you teach at the uh, Holland School, there's tailgating on Thursday nights. And of course, your students are very anxious to buy up your beads, so they have some beads to take home so they can reproduce, hopefully reproduce the same thing that, that you've taught them in the class. Uh, have Definitely. you always crafted? As, as a child, did you craft? Did you? Uh, not so much as a child. It was in later years, probably in the 70s, when I started tinkering, tinkering around with watercolors mm -hmm. and oil paints, acrylics, and. I just fell head over heels in love with the arts, and wow. I've, I've been at it ever since. I've been doing craft shows since 1979. I did my first craft show um, down in Naples, Naples, Florida, where I had well, lived for place. 20 years. To start, I put two little discs forming the footprint, and then I build on these discs individually, back and forth, one wrap a glass on each little disc, adding glass as I go to build up to a disc. This airspace in between, once the glass is all on the disc, I will work to move the disc toward one another closer. Yellow is a rather soft glass to work with likes to collapse. You see I'm building closer and closer to each disc. Eventually they will touch. I'll ease them over. Are all the colors compatible? Is there one color that might not stick to, to another one or are they just... Well, they're supposed to be compatible within themselves. Mm -hmm. The COE 104 which is what I'm working now. This is a uh, Moretti glass that I'm working with now uh, from Italy, Italian glass. And it's coefficiency of expansion, COE, is 104, versus other glasses, bullseye being 90, spectrum being 96, um, borosilicate being 30, and that's not compatible. None of them are compatible if the numbers are not the same. And sometimes, even within them, they're not compatible. Normally, you don't put tools in the flame, but graphite is one of the few materials that you can work with in the flame, always quenching the tool after it's been in the flame. Now I've got the bead made itself, the round bead, and there's air in the middle, so I'm going to even off my ends. You'll notice that I switch hands frequently for control purposes, putting the heat towards the end of the bead at the mandrel to get the ends to pucker up nicely. I'm moving to the other end. The heat pulls the glass, so it's pulling the glass towards the end. So you get nice ends. Once I've got a nice consistent round bead, I'm going to take it out of the flame a little bit, wait for the color to strike back and stiffen up, and then I'm going to put it on the marver, and I'm going to flatten both sides. Okay, and you see anytime you touch a marver, you get that little bullseye. How much time do you have to work with that? As long as I keep it molten, I can play with this bead all day long. Now I'm evening off the heat, 
but I'm also getting the ends hot because in getting the ends hot, if you notice the fish, they're elongated. To get this bead to elongate, you take it out of the flame and you spin. And you see there the you bead go. is now elongated. You have a fish head and you have a fish tail. Well, I like to fancy my fish up, so here I've got enamels. Same COE, they're Thompson enamels from Moretti, COE 104. I'm going to sprinkle what will be the underbelly of the fish with the enamels. This, I chose orange on the yellow. It gives you a real nice contrast. You bring it back into the flame to melt those enamels into the glass. All the glasses I'm using today are koi fish. And I'm going to put some frit on top of the enamel. Frit of choice is iris orange reduction frit. And it's in this one here. I keep this little paintbrush so I can gather it all up. Always moving the glass in the flame, keeping the glass hot, the bead hot. If it cools, it'll crack. And sometimes they do crack while you're making them, but you just continue on. And this will melt into the bead and forms little designs. Looks like scales. This is so fascinating. I used to use all those tools, and now I only use this marver, and that marver just works better if you don't have a lot of extra. Want that, that length back, want that length back, starting to pull in on itself. Spin it and spin it. See, we get that length back. It's back again. <laughs> Depends on how many scales I want on this fish, how much frit I put on it. I'm not getting any frit on the top just on the bottom. You notice when I put the bead back in the flame, I introduce it further out in the flame in the cooler area of the flame so not to explode and blow off the fret. All I'm doing now is pressing the, the melting fret into the glass so it adheres to the glass and becomes a part of the bead. effects. Now I'm going to pick up yellow. You see this yellow rod? I deliberately put two together. I don't know if you can see the color in the middle here. The rods that I'm using, this rod that I'm using is, um, turns colors when you use it. It's called striking. It's pale. When it's introduced to the flame, it darkens up. This is what I'm going to use to put the fins. Notice the color changes as you heat the rod. How long have you been doing the glass beads? I've been making beads since 2000. Wow. This is the, under the head, I'm going to put a little dab of glass there, and I'm going to pull it down. Burn it back up. Now I'm putting it back gather of glass on the top. Now fish have little side fins sometimes, depending on the fish. I like to put these little side fins. I have a variety of tools here that all have different uses. I'm going to start off with the tail, and I like a split tail on a fish, so I mash it with that, reach over here getting my shears, and where I mashed it right in the center, I'm going to take my cold shears and cut it. And you see I split the tail in two, and then I'm going to take 
the needle nose and pinch, pinch. Okay, so we got the tail in order. I'm going to get this top fin. Whoops. And sometimes that has quick here. Slowly introducing the glass to the flame so as not to shock shatter, burn yourself. You notice I'm wearing 100% cotton clothing in case the glass does splatter if it was to land on polyester. That would be bad. Yeah, not a Dangerous, yeah. If that had happened, the polyester it literally melts into your skin, whereas the cotton doesn't happen. These are going to be the eyes. I like to do them out of clear to give them nice watery eyes. I'm picking up a black stringer to finish off the eyes by adding the pupil. Okay, keep them moving. Lips. You need fish lips. <laughs> Gotta have some fish lips, you know. And some lips. I like the lips. Fish lips. Fish lips. I do big kissy lips too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> or and I do little lips. The little lips are the most popular. There he is. Yay! We're ready for the kill. For our next show, we'll travel to Asheville, North Carolina, to visit with Dorothy Guzzo. Dorothy makes homemade paper out of items she finds in her kitchen, in her yard, or just anywhere. Dorothy loves to recycle.